Hi, I'm Tommy Hudson, and I'm the producer of More Brains, A Return to the Living Dead. I was the writer-producer of Never Sleep Again, The Elm Street Legacy, which was the definitive documentary on the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So Beverly Randolph, who was the star of Return of the Living Dead, had seen that and thought it was such a great treatment of a film franchise and a really interesting, exciting way to explore the making of a movie, she had wanted to do the same. Return of the Living Dead is such a classic, iconic zombie movie from 1985. It was something that people really responded to because of the, the blood and the guts and the sex and the punk. And it really kind of ushered in, I think, a new era of what zombies could be. Zombies didn't run until Return of the Living Dead. Zombies didn't talk until Return of the Living Dead. So it just seemed like such an interesting movie to explore. Getting everyone to come on board is is actually one of the toughest parts in one of these film retrospectives because a lot of times people are scattered everywhere around the country and frankly sometimes people are done talking about the movies they've made decades before. We were really lucky in that our executive producer also happened to be a star of the film. So Beverly Randolph was instrumental in getting the entire cast together. So you always have a team of people making phone calls, coaxing them into the chair. But again, with the executive producer being a star of the movie, it was an incredible help. I mean, she could certainly lend credence to the project and say, this really is definitive. This is a good project. We want to tell a great story, have fun, look back, be entertaining and informative for the audience. So really all of that together helped incredibly. Getting footage and the behind the scenes and pictures and everything like that, it's always such an ambitious undertaking. It's just thousands of phone calls, thousands of emails, asking everyone and anyone who worked on the film, assistants, everybody, do they have anything from the film? And really, you have to leave no stone unturned. You never know who is going to have something. Uh, we ended up contacting, I think, a third assistant intern or something, and they had the most fantastic Polaroid that had never before been seen. We shot all of our interviews over the course of about two weekends, but the entire project from inception and idea into final DVD in hand was 10 months. We edited more brains pretty quickly. I would say the actual editing process once we had a quote unquote final script down was about three months because we had all of our interviews done in April and May, all the transcription was done, and then we started piecing together the elements of the story, and you try and find all of those in the bites before it goes to the editor because you want everything to be as complete as possible. Once he had our first cut, we had about three months to do everything, hone the story, whittle away, put in the good stuff, take out you know the stuff that doesn't work, as well as all the effects, the titles, the music, the scoring, the final mix. It was a really fast process for post. It was funded in part by um, our executive producers, Beverly Randolph, again, who starred in the original film. Uh, Michael Perez owns a company, and he had wanted to do it. He's the publicist for Beverly, so he put in money. I also, as a producer, uh, came forward with some funds, and I also raised um, the rest of the money to finance the gap. But it is usually a labor of love, as cliche as that sounds, to find people who want to explore the movies the way you want to. Uh, usually finding the money is never the easiest thing, especially for a documentary about a horror movie, but you knock on enough doors, you find those fans out there who want to explore it with you. I first heard about the festival when someone had watched our documentary and actually said, do you know that Arclight is doing a documentary festival? One of the best things about this festival is it's free. There's no reason for us not to have entered. I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gained. It was really interesting and fun to get people to vote and have you know your friends help you vote and, and you know you tell one person and they tell one person. It was this chain of events that led to you know happily us getting into the festival, but it was also a lot of fun, you know, and it actually made you reach out to all those friends on your list that are your friends. You know, now you can actually ask them for a favor and see if they come through. <laughs>